The base salary is kind of like the most important and the core component of your compensation structure. So when you see this 40 lakhs per annum to 48 lakhs per annum, this is the actual cash that you get. But starting from 2025, this is now not a mandatory component that you are going to get. And you are leaving earlier than that, or let's say there is any kind of other clawbacks, then also Uber is okay to offer you a joining bonus. So Uber offers kind of like a 2 lakh to 3 lakh one-time relocation bonus. I was actually offered a 2 lakh relocation bonus. So the performance bonus was close to 7.5 lakhs and this can even double based on the then stock options are one of the most lucrative part of the compensation in a tech company in uber you don't have to wait for a complete year for one fourth of your vesting every month you get some part of your vesting altogether every quarter you get close to 17,000 of additional wellness benefit uber stock price is for example let's say hundred dollars so you will be able to buy one uber stock at ninety dollars so your compensation structure varies a lot but that's not the case with uber before moving forward forward, I would like to tell you about our brand new offering at AlgoCamp around the advanced Spring Boot backend development cohort. So we were getting a lot of requests to actually launch our next iteration of the Spring Boot cohort and here we are. This one is far more bigger and better than the last one and trust me, if you are somebody who is looking to start their journey in the world of Spring Boot in the backend ecosystem or maybe you already know some things about backend development maybe in Spring Boot or maybe in some other tech stack this is going to be a one-stop solution for you we are going to talk about everything from the absolute beginner level to the advanced level in Spring Boot we are going to talk about how exactly you can set up your backend ecosystem and backend projects in Spring Boot we are going to take a microservice driven architecture and build different different project including an Uber app including Airbnb app payment wallet like Paytm wallet app and many more. We are going to talk about how exactly microservices can actually communicate with each other in synchronous and asynchronous fashion. We are going to see a lot of interesting microservices pattern like CQRS pattern, Saga pattern for distributed transaction, how you can implement Saga pattern through orchestration and choreography, how Saga pattern is going to help you with respect to the implementation if you compare that with two-phase commit, how you can implement each one of them, what is the outbox pattern, how exactly event sourcing is going to work, how you can integrate Kafka for your event sourcing and whatnot. We are going to see so many interesting database concepts like how exactly no SQLs are internally implemented using LSM trees what are right ahead logs how you can replicate your databases how you can shard your databases how you can design a good database schema and whatnot all the topics that we are going to cover must be listed in front of you on the screen here what i can say is that this course is going to be one stop solution to become an advanced backend engineer in spring boot this is definitely going to demand some good time commitment from all the students who are interested but trust me this is going to be one hell of a ride so what are you waiting for do check out the link in the description section below and read the complete end-to-end -end syllabus of what we are going to cover in the Spring Boot cohort. You can actually use the coupon SPRING2025 to get maximum possible discount on the course and I'm really excited to see you guys in the cohort, right? Do check out the link description section below and let's get back to the video. Also, before we start the video, I just want to mention one thing that there were a lot of speculations that were actually coming up in my Uber interview experience video. So I'll be talking about that at the very end of the video that whether I'll be joining, not joining, what the situation overall like so do watch the video till the very end so that you get understanding about everything around the uber's compensation structure and as well as whether i'll be working there or not so recently i uploaded a video on this channel where actually i explained the complete interview process for software engineer 2 in backend role at uber right now a lot of people actually were asking that what's the compensation structure like that uber actually offers sd2s let's say in mostly front end backend there's kind of like similar compensation but what's the overall compensation structure that uber offers and this video is going to technically talk about that we are going to talk about the in-depth breakdown of exactly how the compensation structure looks like and we'll talk about each and every single part of the component, right? How exactly it's distributed, how the negotiation generally work and so on. So without any further ado, let's just start. But before starting the video, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, I would highly recommend you guys to do subscribe to the channel because we are going to put some really awesome updates and content up ahead on this one. So let's just start. So just like any other, um, I would say big tech company, Uber also has kind of like similar components in the overall compensation structure. So the compensation includes, first of all, your base salary. That's the actual cash that you get every month, right? Then the second component is the joining bonus that the one-time bonus that you actually get when you join a new company. The third component is a relocation bonus that in case you have to actually relocate for your company, then one-time bonus is actually provided for that. The fourth one 
is the annual performance bonus that let's say after the end of the year based on your complete performance and let's say the company's performance based on multipliers of both you get an annual performance bonus as well the next component is the stock options considering that uber is a listed company then it also offers you rsus that is restricted stock units that vests uh, in different different ways i'll talk about that and apart from that one more component is the extra added benefits which includes a lot of allowances insurances etc so we will talk about that as well right so these are the different different components and let's start taking deep dive into each and every single component one by one so the base salary is kind of like the most important and the core component of your compensation structure it includes the actual cash that you are going to get every month apart from the bonuses stock options etc right so if you see for sd2 roles the band of the base salary is pretty wide at uber if you will go to lead code you will find a lot of people mentioning that they got the base salary somewhere in the range from 40 lakhs per annum and that goes up to let's say 48 lakhs per annum this is kind of like the data that i also saw and you will be able to very easily also find it as well right so when you see this 40 lakhs per annum to 48 lakhs per annum this is the actual cash that you get in this cash comp component you have all of your basic salary as well as your retirees and the pf included right so every month from your salary like it's actually the uh, i would say the rule is somehow that you actually contribute to your pf and the same amount is contributed by your company as well right but the amount that i'm telling you is inclusive of both as well so these retirees and let's say um, whatever are the extra taxations that uh, one has to pay this includes that so technically you can get from 40 lakhs per annum to 48 lakhs per annum including your pf contribution as well if you ask me then mine was on the higher side considering that i was actually uh, offered an high sd2 role so the base salary was kind of like on the higher side but depending on your interview performance what your past salary was what your um, let's say counter offers are based on that this range can actually differ right so this is something that you have to technically negotiate yourself the better you negotiate the more higher side compensation structure you can actually expect so uber offers a one time joining bonus right now if you see from let's say like from 2020 to 2024 this component was the core part of the uber's compensation structure but starting from 2025 this is now not a mandatory component that you are going to get yes so there might be a case that if you clear an uber uh, round then you might not be offered the joining bonus why because they have actually kind of like distributed this uh, bonus part into the other components as well sometimes for example in my case as well i was actually aff- offered a joining bonus this joining bonus can be offered due to multiple reasons first is let's say when you are leaving your last company if you have to let's say give back any bonuses that were given to you or you were expecting a bonus in let's say a couple of months and you are leaving earlier than that or let's say there is any kind of other clawbacks then also uber is okay to offer you a joining bonus again it depends solely on your negotiations and what your situation is in my case uber actually offered a 5 lakh one time joining bonus right that will be technically credited for any employee who is actually offered the joining bonus the joining bonus is technically credited with your first month salary right with a few terms and conditions here and there and this is a one time thing you don't get it every month you don't get it every year this is kind of like a one time joining bonus that you get Now this component is very straightforward a lot of companies do offer this as well so relocation bonus is a bonus that is actually given to you so that you are easily able to relocate to the city you are able to set up things however you want and because you are going to do a move from one city to another this whole process becomes very streamlined for you so uber offers um kind of like a 2 lakh to 3 lakh i would say one time relocation bonus i was actually offered a 2 lakh relocation bonus again the moment you actually join the company with your first salary this relocation bonus also gets created right and this is something that a lot of companies has been uh, giving sometimes let's say if you are uh, particularly in a city and within that city only you are getting your new offer then sometimes the companies might uh, reject your request for a relocation bonus right but otherwise in most of the cases you will be technically offered a relocation bonus as well now the annual performance bonus is also part of most of the companies that you see most of the big tech companies do offer an annual performance bonus this annual performance bonus is kind of like the component which is variable right 
right so based on your performance throughout the year and the company's performance throughout the year based on the multiplier of both of these this performance bonus can vary right for example at uber what was offered to me i can tell you that so the performance bonus was close to seven and a half lakhs and this can even double based on the performance of let's say uber as well as my own performance if let's say if i would have joined then based on my performance and uber's performance based on that this could this amount could have doubled as well that could go close to 14 lakhs right and as i mentioned this is variable right so maybe it will double maybe it will go 1.1 times 1.2 times 1.5 times and so on so this is kind of like a multiplier that is calculated uh, like based on the performance of the company and the employee right and this component is technically part of major majority of the companies for example if you see google if you see meta if you see microsoft most of these companies do actually offer these kind of performance bonus and this is technically to ensure that your enthusiasm is high throughout there and you have kind of like a motivation to work above and beyond go exceed expectation because your bonus is technically on the line so this is also kind of like a very interesting part of the compensation structure now uber being a listed company also offers stock option to be very honest if you ask me then stock options are one of the most lucrative part of the compensation in a tech company why because even if you leave the company then these stock options are there for you considering you have not sold them and as the company grows the stock price also appreciates a lot of employees are actually working to make sure that the company grows the company grows that means the stock price also grows and your overall net worth also keep on increasing plus i believe that once you have cash in hand that is very easy to spend right but if let's say a good majority part of your component is already put into a very valuable stock considering the stock of companies like uber google microsoft these kind of companies then your money is also parked in a good investment right so uber also offers stock options right uh, because uber was listed recently so they have also started giving you rsus these are restricted stock units what does this mean that uber actually offers you a certain amount of stock options right and they will be vested over four years so every year you are going to get one fourth of the stock option so what i was offered i was offered an 80 lakh stock grant which will be vested over four years so technically it's not 80 lakhs per year it's 20 lakhs only right so 20 lakhs is also a good amount to be very honest but that's not the best part about uber's compensation the best part about uber's stock option compensation was that the vesting is done monthly so a lot of companies what happens is that let's say you get let's say 100 rupees stock option and let's say that is going to be vested over four years so at the end of the first year you get 25 rupees at the end of the second year you get 25 rupees and so on but that's not the case with uber in uber you don't have to wait for a complete year for one fourth of your vesting every month you get some part of your vesting altogether so that's technically an interesting part that happens with uber right so a lot of time people feel that okay uh, the stock option will be given at the end of the year but because of this because you get monthly vesting right for the next four years this is something that uh, makes things more interesting because every month you get something credited you to your stock account so it feels more like a salary to you as well so that's interesting plus apart from this initial grant every year after the review cycle you are also offered refresher stock option so that your because after four years otherwise these stocks will like eventually completely get vested and you will be left with nothing so to make sure that that's not the case every year you get refresher stocks as well so that your overall stock portfolio keeps on growing so uber provides some really interesting uh, set of benefits right so for example one of the benefits is that you get free uber credits right um, as far as i know uber doesn't have a cab service like google and microsoft uh, for employees but instead what they do is they give you free uber credits which are enough to actually commute to and fro from office you can even use it for other purpose like if you don't want to go to office you want to go somewhere else you can still use these credit it's not like unlimited credits they give a certain amount of credits around 4000 uh, slightly more than 4000 rupees per month that's an interesting uh, perk that actually uber provides apart from that every quarter you get close to 17000 of um, i would say additional wellness benefit right so there is a lot of things that you can actually order and get that reimbursed right so if you see more or less in an year you get close to 70 to 75000 of this particular allowance which is also pretty good considering the fact that you might have to let's say do some work from home setup you might have to let's say buy some things for you because of the fact that this category is very high like very huge a lot of products are actually included so this miscellaneous allowance also becomes very interesting right for example people can actually go and buy fitness equipments fitness bands right gaming consoles a lot of things are there so that's also an interesting perk about uh, uber 
Apart from that, of course, there are insurance policies. You get your own health insurance, you get your life insurance. All of these insurance policies are technically covered. And again, a few more, um, I would say, perks are there. For example, Uber office also has free food, right? You can get free food at the Uber office. Don't have to bother about that and many more. So these are like more, uh, I would say, benefits that you actually get. But one interesting benefit is the ESPP uh, program. What is ESPP program? So what, and this program is not just by Uber. This program is offered by other companies like Microsoft, Coinbase, etc. So in this particular program, what you can do is from your base salary that we earlier talked about, you can take a small component that is as far as I know, 15% maximum of your base salary. You can directly buy an Uber stock, but that purchase you will be able to do at a price less than 10% of the original price. So let's say, for example, Uber stock price is, for example, let's say $100. So you will be able to buy one Uber stock at $90 and how many you can actually buy you will be able to buy which the amount which will be coming within the 15% of your base salary maximum you can vary this as well you can make it 5% 2% 10% but maximum you can do 15% so this is kind of like a very lucrative option that you are able to buy the company stocks at already a discounted price so you are kind of like the moment it appreciates you will be able to make more profits out of it so this is something that a lot of people definitely enroll on as I mentioned otherwise the base salary is kind of like spent very early so this is also one interesting perk that uber offers and there are a few more interesting perks as well that most of the other companies also offer which is included with uber as well so if you see my final verdict is that for a suite two compensation uber is one of the i would say top four to five companies that actually pay this high in um, i would say overall compensation structure there are other company other companies as well but uh, what i feel is that in other companies the your overall compensation structure drops because of the vesting cycle sometimes the vesting cycle in the initial years is very less sometimes the vesting cycle in the later years is very less for the stocks so your compensation structure varies a lot but that's not the case with uber and overall the compensation structure is slightly on the higher side i would say that is very good so if you're somebody who is actually willing to work uh, in a big tech giant uber is something that is going to be very exciting for you uh, what i know about the tech stack is they have very exciting tech stack for example in the back end majority of the back end goes with golang and java they have some really good in-house tools developed the overall dev ecosystem what i have heard about is very very good and very very modern so it's gonna be like a very interesting company if you would like to work just uh, like a lot of people were actually uh, commenting i will not be considering this and i will not be working with uber right we'll be talking about what is coming up next for me in the further upcoming set of videos but i thought this video is going to be useful for those who are actually in the negotiation stages and who would like to understand that what maximum they can actually push in order to get the maximum compensation out of uber so that being said let's wrap this particular video here we are going to meet soon in the next set of videos till then take care bye bye i'm sanket singh signing off